This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Well, hello there and welcome back. In this exercise, we're going to start the keying process. And to get yourself going, I'm going to need you to open the key.aep file located in your Lesson 04 exercise folder. And when it opens, this is exactly what you're going to see, a little blank document. What we're going to do is we're going to import in that image that we uh, downloaded from that website at the start of this lesson. And to do that, it's File, Import, File. And you're going to go to your Godiva wide folder, which is most likely put inside your assets folder. And you'll notice that it is a series of PNG images. And you might just find yourself getting a ton of these uh, files. Don't worry about it. You're going to just select the first one and you see the first image. And what this is basically, this footage has been output as a PNG sequence. So it's just a series of images. And as you can see, when you select the first one, it says, ooh, there's numbers here. So it's PNG sequence. The other thing that you want to be aware of is if you ever do get a PNG sequence, don't change anything. Don't change the numbering or anything like that, or you're going to screw it up completely. So just select the first one, PNG sequence. If you want, you can force an alphabetical order. And you just click open, and the file comes in, and this is what it looks like. And I just want you to drop it on the timeline. And there she is. And if you scrub across the timeline, We've got our Godiva wide file, and she is standing in front of a fan. It is blowing on her veil there, and the object of the game here is to get rid of all the fan and stuff like that. So the first step in the process is to start getting rid of the stuff you don't need, and as we covered off in the uh, last exercise, you're going to need a garbage mat here. So we're just going to select the clip on the timeline, get the pen tool, and then just draw out a mat or a series of vectors and you don't want to touch the subject there we go got that done as you can see everything else is gone the transparency is there and i can now scrub across and i just want to make sure that she's not swinging her veil outside of the key area that we've identified here okay so she hasn't let's get the green out to get the green out is really not terribly difficult what you do is you can uh, select the clip and you, one of two places you can go. You can go to uh, keying right here and select the key light 1.2, or you can even just make sure that you've got the clip selected, effect, keying, and there's key light 1.2 right there. So if we select that, up it comes. And then over in the effect controls, you can see that it's got a lot of stuff to it. So the first step in the process is to identify the color that we want to get taken out. That's the screen color. So you just click on the little eyedropper here, find an area of green that is somewhat neutral, click it. And at this stage of the game, you look at this and you go, wow, that's gone. Well, no, it's not. You've still got some issues. As soon as you identify the key color, okay, that's the screen color that we're taking out. Then you come back up here to the view menu and you select screen matte. And what this does is it changes it into a black and white image, which basically looks like a Photoshop channel, which is exactly what we want. The area that's going to be keyed out must be a solid black. And you can see it's not solid black. So one of the things that you can do to address that is to change the screen gain right here. So if you scrub across this value, you can see that the floor starts to turn black. So if we get up to a value of about 125, it's looking pretty good. The uh, other thing that we can do is put a bit of an edge, a very soft edge on this mask because it might be a little bit jagged. So we're just going to add a little pre-blur to the screen and we'll just come to the screen pre-blur and take it up to about one. You don't want a whole bunch in here. Now we've got a bit of a problem here. Right here with the dress, you can see that there's still some gray in there. This has got to be solid white, and there's some in here. So we can deal with that issue by twirling down screen map. And what we're going to do is clip the white. Now watch what happens when you scrub across the white value. Okay, if I take it up or take it down. And in this case, what we want to do is take it down. Now pay close attention to this area in here. Okay, so now we've gotten rid of a lot of the stuff that's here. 
Another thing that we can do is if there is some black still in there, we can clip the black. And what you do is you just take the black up and you can see that it starts to pick up a little bit of contrast. And if we start taking it down, and if you go too far, that's what you wind up with. So it looks kind of dumb. You don't want to have big movement here. Okay, now the other thing I want you to be really clear on is this is not Hollywood that we're doing here. I'm showing you the fundamentals. I mean, in Hollywood, you're going to spend hours doing this sort of thing. So just be aware of it. Now let's take a look at how it looks. So if we uh, come to the final result, you can see that we've got the shadow. You can see through her veil. And it looks pretty good. Now a couple of things that you might want to look for when you start doing these sorts of things. Pay attention to the edge of her hair. Make sure that it doesn't look like she, you know, she's wearing some sort of helmet. Hair is always a pain to do. But make sure that, you know, it's not a helmet or there's no choking on this thing. In other words, the mat has come in. If I uh, turn off the mask, you can see she looks pretty good here. So the steps again, just to review, identify the screen color and then swing over to screen mat so you can see the mask. The object of the game is to make the blacks black and the whites white. And to do that, you can adjust the uh, screen gain to bring up the blacks, or you can use the clipping in the screen mat to bring up the black and the white. And if you want to soften the edges of the mask, you might want to use a little bit of screen pre-blur. A lot of these tools in here are really quite interesting. For instance, if I want to shrink or expand the screen, I can do that. This brings it in. So if there's a bit of a glow on her, you can do that. D-spot black, D-spot white. Basically what that does, if there's any black in the whites or any whites in the blacks, it will just get rid of them. You can work inside the mask with this tool. You can work outside the mask. You can work with color correction. You can do edge color correction. And you can even do a little bit of cropping with the source. But right now, this is the basic steps. Take out the key color. This is the most critical step right here. The whites must be white and the blacks must be black. There should not be any detail in the background. If you've got the green coming out, there should be no detail in it. And you can adjust that by using the screen gain and you can clip black and clip white to bring the whites up and bring the blacks in. And then once you've finished the process, back to final result. And if you're a happy camper, you can save the file. So there you go. There's using the key light filter. Hollywood technique all the way. I love using this filter and one of the things that you're going to enjoy about it is just exploring what you can do with it. In the next exercise what we'll take a look at is working with spill and choking masks and things like that. I'll see you there.